how many of y'all are grateful for having a warm place to stay? Just uh, a warm place. I was uh, traveling on Thursday, uh, Friday, I can't remember, Thursday or Friday, and I had a flat tire. And uh, it was about 30, what, 36 degrees outside. You know, you got a flat tire. You can't stay inside. You got to get out and look at it. And I was like, man, it's cold. And I left the house, and I didn't bring a coat with me because I didn't plan on being outside. So I don't care if you plan on being outside. I always take a coat. Uh, that's what I learned. Um, and so I'm passing that wisdom off to you guys. Make sure you wear a coat because it's cold outside. <laughs> um, and, and it just reminded me of how fortunate we are. Sometimes we don't re remember how fortunate we are until we hit unfortunate circumstances uh, and situations that are unfortunate that we can see how good God has been to us. And I'm thankful for God's goodness because it permeates through everything that we do and who we are. Jordan, you're blessed. You're blessed. You're blessed. John, you're blessed. You're blessed. Sam, you are blessed. Let's give it up for our band. They are, they are truly anointed people. Um, and I'm thankful for the bands that we've had continuously since our, our beginning. But I'm, I'm grateful for you guys and, and where you are and where, where you guys allow us to go every Sunday. I mean, every, every week uh, we have great music. And it's not just good sounding music, but it's heavenly music. And I'm grateful for those things. And you don't know that until you don't have a band, until you're, you're listening to YouTubes and you're uh, trying to do things and you got me as your lead vocalist. You don't know how good it is to have a band. <laughs> Until, until you could, Adrian, that was way too loud. That was way too loud. Um, it was sunny outside, but I felt the shade. It was a little shady, but it's all good. Uh, but I'm grateful because, you, you know, things are bigger than you. You're only as, as, as good as your team, right? You're only as good as the people that you surround yourself with and the people that uh, support what God does in you. And uh, we're starting a new series, and it's called Screw It. Somebody say, screw it. Screw it. Yeah, you, you, you don't know how, how blessed you are until... Uh, you are without the people around you that can support you, support your vision, support what God is doing in you. And um, this morning's uh, title is, is Why Couples Lie. Why Couples Lie. Anybody in here has not told a lie, go ahead and stand on your feet and rejoice real loud. If that's you um, on the chat, type in, I have never lied. And we'll know that you are the biggest liar in the room because you will, you, will, you will be able to, to be spotted. And so we've all lied, amen? We've, we've all been there. We've all told a little white lie, little black lie, tall gray lie, green lie. We, uh, men lie, women lie. We've all lied at some point. And, and one of the things that as I've been, been thinking about uh, why couples lie, God gave me this uh, illustration of termites. Anybody ever had a house with termites in it? Um, yeah, termites. Some of you, you, you may not have experienced that. Uh, but termites are little small insects that live inside of, of your walls, and they eat on the wood silently. They, they sit there and they gnaw on the wood. They continue to eat up the wood. And if you don't catch them in time, they will destroy the structure of your home. Your house will literally fall apart without you even knowing that anything had happened. And that's what termites do. And God showed me that is what happens with lies inside of your relationship. That if they are not addressed, if they are not uh, treated, if they don't come out, then they will eat away. Everything will look good on the outside, but on the inside it will be destroyed. It will eat at the very fiber that you thought that was holding your relationship up together. It will actually be imploding and tearing it down. And so termites are, 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 are these things that uh, they don't really affect you right away. And sometimes that's the worst thing, right? When you, when you experience something and it doesn't affect you right away, but it affects you over time. And the longer that the lie stays inside of your relationships, friendships, marriages, son to mother, mother to son, father to daughter, it, as long as it stays in the midst of that, it will do damage. And it's up to us to be able to do damage control. Anybody ever told a lie? Anybody ever said a lie? Anybody ever got caught in a lie before? You got caught. They, they caught you in that lie and, and, and you were, you were the, the cover was pulled off. And uh, it's, it's interesting that, that it happens that way. And so as I, I too have, have struggled with this and Sparkle and I have, you know, been in, in some situations where she's caught me in a lie. Where were you really? Okay, you're not going to tell me yet. Okay. I don't really like when my wife does me like that. Like, don't play with me, woman. But, you know, when you're around somebody, you, it's kind of hard to lie to them when they, when they kind of know you, right? They know your patterns. They know what you do. They, they kind of know the influx in your voice. They know when you go high pitch, you're lying. You know, anybody 
know their spouse. Like, I, what? What did you see? I don't know why that's like the octave to go when you're caught in the line. What? Why you can, so if you want to be a better liar, make sure you keep the same monotone voice. Now, I'm not teaching you how to be better liars, but I'm teaching you how to say screw it. Because screw it um, means that I am not going to allow the fear of the truth to stop me from being honest in my relationships. And so we walk into this place today, all of us are, are liars. We all have some discolored and drooping drywall in our relationships. We all have some peeling paint that resembles some lie damage. We all have wood in our lives that sounds hollow when tapped, and we have pinpointed holes in our character because we have all lied. And some of the lies that, that we tell go like this. What's wrong? Nothing. Why do we do that? Why? No, I, I see something is wrong with you. What's wrong? Nothing. One of the biggest lies that we can tell. Who taught us how to not express what's happening with us in the moment? Who taught us that? Other lies that we hear in relationships, it's not you, it's me. Other lies we tell, my phone died. And I couldn't answer. Other lies we've told, I only had one beer, one glass of wine. Why are you late? I was stuck in traffic. No, you weren't. There was no traffic. One of the biggest lies, you look amazing. For my shopaholics, it didn't cost that much. Here's the biggest one. I would never lie to you. Other ones we say, you haven't changed a bit. Look the same way you did 20 years ago. Clearly in the pictures, you don't look the same at all. That person was 100 pounds like no, just me. It was on sale, so I had to get. And there are actually thousands of more lies that we use. And they come out in different shapes and different forms. And in all sizes, we see lies. Big lies, little lies, mature lies, new lies. Birthing lies, realize that they are all lies. So I ask the question, well, why do people lie in relationships? Anybody ever wonder why? You ever thought about why you lie, John? No? No? You never thought about it? So they what? So they won't get hurt. Yeah. See, that's the biggest lie we tell ourselves because really we don't want to have to deal with the hurt. So I would rather not tell you so I can save my feelings. But it's better to say that it's about you. Because if I told you that I cheated on you, I know that that would hurt me more than it hurt you. So I'd rather just say everything is fine. One of the reasons that we lie in relationships is to save face. This image that I portray, this persona that I have, the person that I want to show you who I You do it in dating. We, in dating, we always show persons a false self of us. We lie to them when we first show up. And we have to continue that same lie. They were talking about a guy uh, who met this girl, and he had, a, he had a Maserati when she first met him, and he looked good, smelled good, and then once he moved in, he didn't have a car. Got it off Turo. <laughs> She was like, yeah, I thought he had money, but he, ever since he moved in, he ain't had nothing. Because he started off with a lie. He didn't show up in his authentic self. What if we were authentically us? Maybe we might attract or be attracted to the right person. But we put on these things that are, are facades, and we want to save that facade, so we will tell another lie to keep up with the lies. Did you know that lies have no end? There's no end to lies. But the truth has a period. Another reason that we lie in relationships is to avoid conflict. 
I'd rather not deal with your silence. I'd rather not deal with your berating. I'd rather not deal with the, the conflict that's coming. So I would rather lie to you than engage. Because I don't want to deal with that. I don't, I don't want to have conflict with you. Number three, people lie to protect their egos. What if they found out that I lost the bid or the contract? That I won't be able to pay the mortgage this month? What if they found out that I am not as good as I thought I was or as good as I say I am? What if I told them that I lost the job? Or what if I told them that I now have a disease? What if I told them now that I have cancer? What if I told them now I don't want everybody to worry about me? I don't want people to, to worry about me. So to, in order to protect you, I lie. And all it does is prolong the pain for later. Number four, the reasons that people lie in relationships is to protect their image. Image control. That's why Instagram is the best place to lie. You can protect your image online. And number five, as John said, to avoid hurting their partner's feelings. This is why people lie. But here's the deal. Secrets have a way of trapping you in a life that you do not want to live in. Secrets have a way of trapping you in a life that you don't want to live in. And, and it's the lies that we build that are walls to protect us, but at the end they close us up in spaces that only truth can get us out of. Lies are walls that build, that we build to protect us conflict, but they end up closing us in a space that only truth can get us out of. And it's tough because we don't really want to lie, but we feel like we have to. Because as Lizzie said, the truth hurts. But I believe that truth only hurts when it's not done in love. But here's the deal. There are two sides of truth. There is the giver of truth and there is the receiver of truth. The giver of truth won't give the gift of truth to the receiver if the receiver is not a good receiver. But the receiver wants the truth, but the receiver does not give grace when truth is given. So it looks like this in normal relationships. If I tell you the truth, I am punished for giving you the truth. That is why children lie to their parents because if they told their parents the truth, they would get a whipping. So why would I sign up for the whipping? Or the berating or the chastisement or the punishment or the grounding. Yeah, I got in trouble in school and I know I'm going to get in trouble at home. So I'm not going to tell the truth because if I tell the truth, I will be punished. So maybe here at Inspiration Church and in and, 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 and godly circumstances, maybe we should do what the scripture says when it tells us that we should delight and rejoice in the truth. It says love does not delight in evil, but it rejoices with the truth. So what does that look like? It looks like, you know, some people that, uh, that uh, you're uh, one of those persons that you can't wait to catch somebody in a lie. That you raise your hand, stand tall. You can't wait because you think it already. So you can't wait to be like, boom, I got you. I knew you was a liar. You're a liar. You're a cheater. You're a backstabber. You're all of those things. You cannot wait for the lie to come out. But the Bible says love does not, that's not love. That's that fleshly part of you, but it says it rejoices in the truth. What does rejoicing in the truth look like? So Pastor Chris was telling a story uh, uh, about Ezra. Ezra had came to him and told him about something horrible that he did. And after Ezra told Pastor Chris about what he did, Chris said, well, let's go to the store. I'm going to buy you something. His mom looked at him and said, well, what are you doing? And he said, well, he came and he told me the truth. 
And in our minds, truth that's bad equates punishment. But what he did was change the narrative and truth will be rewarded because you told me the truth. And now anytime you tell me the truth, I will reward you. And that way you can be a good receiver of truth, even when it's not favorable. So our marriages, our relationships, they need to be cultivated in a way where truth can be exposed and rejoiced. Some of y'all looking at me like, mm -mm, that's not me at all. Well, I want to do a little bit of coaching today on how to receive honest truth. <laughs> Write this down. If you don't know how to respond to truth without flipping out, going cold, tripping out, fighting, shooting, cutting, breaking stuff. <laughs> then one of the ways that you can respond to truth is like this. Say, thank you for telling me the truth. First, before you go off on calling them and judging them and punching them and beating them and going upside their head and, and, and giving them everything that you want to give them because you are delighting in, in, in evilness, tell them, I thank you for telling me the truth. I know it was a tough thing for you to say. This is a tough conversation, and I am hurt, but I am glad I know. Can I have some time to process this? And can we talk about this later today? Thank you for being honest. I'm going to say it again. Thank you for telling me the truth. I know it was a tough thing to say. This is a tough conversation, and I am hurt. But I am glad I know. Can I have some time to process this? And can we talk about this later today? Thank you for being honest. Just think about if you were able to tell your spouse something, and they thank you for being honest. I'm going to go out on a limb here. How many of you feel like your spouse, a person that you're with, accepts the truth easily and well? Raise your hand. It's a reality. Y'all saw the, the, the flourish of hands shoot up. There was some, ah. <laughs> So what we have done as a culture as we have created better liars. Because we punish when lies happen, and so nobody wants to tell the truth. Because it doesn't feel good to tell the truth. It feels better to tell the lie because it'll buy me time. And maybe you won't find out until after I die. Then I won't have to deal with the truth. Can people be honest with you? That's what you have to ask yourself that question. Carlos, can people be honest with you? Yeah, they can be honest with me. Now, here's the second question. Do they feel good after they've been honest with you? Or do they feel beaten down to the ground? If somebody punishes someone for being honest, they won't get better at telling the truth. They will get better at hiding and not getting caught. Termites are the best at hide and go seek. It's quiet in here today. But you know the lies start as we're children. Tell our kids after they've come off the soccer field, you did an amazing job. And they were terrible. You tell your D student, you are a great student. You're the smartest in the class. Lies. Tell our kids, I'm going to pick you up. You may not show up. But the, the reality is that you don't have to tell your children that they've done a terrible job. 
Just be honest with them. Son, right now, you're not that good at soccer. But I believe that if you continue to work, there's a possibility that you may get better. That's the truth. The truth will allow your child to be free to go explore other things like violin. But when we lie to people, we keep them in positions way too long. Even as a boss, if you're lying to that person that's late every day and saying, don't worry, keep up the good job. No, things need to be confronted with the truth, but the truth wrapped in love. See, truth has a sweet spot. If it's too bold, it becomes arrogant and brashful. If it's too passive, it becomes a lie. You have to hit the truth right in the middle. So your truth may be too bold, too brashful, and too rigid. And then you want to tell people you can't handle the truth. No, we can't handle your arrogance. It's a difference. Because the truth wrapped in love is going to build up a relationship and not tear a person down. Ephesians chapter 4 says it best this way. At the beginning of Ephesians 4, 1 through 6, it says, As a prisoner for the Lord, this is Paul, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. This is a loving relationship. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace and not lies. There is one body, one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One love, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is over all and through all and in all. Drop down to verse 11, it says this. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature. Put that down. Say, I need to become mature. Attaining the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be as infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching. What he's talking about is your emotions all over the place. You over here, you over there. No, no matter where the wind blows, that's where you go. No matter what they say, that's where you go. You have no control. He says, I need you to be mature. And being mature is being able to verbalize how I'm feeling, what I've experienced, how I emote in this particular situation, what I feel like, what I've experienced, what I've done. I need to be able to be mature. It says, by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness, that's lies, of people in their deceitful scheming. It says this right here, and this is the, the, the scripture that I read all of that for. You may not have understood all of that, but you will understand this one right here. It says, instead, speak the truth in love. Then it says, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head. That is Christ. Here's the deal. When you tell the truth, it needs to be in a way that it will build up the person that you're talking to. Now listen, I didn't say when you tell a lie, it's meant to build. When you tell the truth, it is to build the person up. One of the things that you have to do is make sure that when people tell you the truth, that you don't judge them for the truth. There's a saying in today's saying that says, live your truth. Be you, baby. And the reason they're saying to live their truth is because this world has conditioned us to live in a lie. And as we come out of the Pursuit of Purpose series, and you haven't checked that out, make sure you go and check out the Pursuit of Purpose series. What we learned is we learned who we are. We learned what we've been created for. We learned what we've been called on this earth to do. And the greatest enemy of that is who you connected to. 
Because if you know your purpose, but you're hooked up to the wrong people, then it will destroy your purpose. And many times people are like, oh, I need to get out of this relationship. No, it's time to have honest conversations at home about who we are, what we're dealing with, and what we're going through mentally, spiritually, and physically. And we have to be able to be able to release those things to the people that are around us that we trust. So yeah, if you've got a, you like going to the casino, don't try to hide it. I'm talking to myself. Wife said, where were you? Uh, high pitched voice. But what if, what if we lived in relationships where we could be totally 100% honest? Think about it. Babe, I'm, I'm having trouble with liking you today. What? Why? I don't know. Well, let's talk about it. Well, yesterday you came home and you didn't even kiss me yesterday. We don't have those conversations. You know what we do? We wake up and what's wrong with you? Nothing. How was your day? It was a great day. You just got laid off, but you're hiding it because you don't want to be honest and you don't want your image to be broken and you don't want other people to worry. Maybe they were there to support you. Maybe that God gave you a support system so that you can be honest or you don't have to bear all of the weight of the world. Just be honest. The very gift that God has given us, we lie and we don't receive help because we reject the truth. And God is saying, don't build this wall of lies that only truth can break through. Build your house with truth that lies won't be able to dwell in. Speak the truth. Speak the truth. Somebody say that. Speak the truth. Look at the person next to you. Speak the truth. Tell them we got to talk when we get home. Speak the truth. Yeah, I know. I know. Type that in. Speak the truth. Come on, pastor. Speak the truth. So from a practical standpoint, we know that Difficult things are best heard when our defenses are not up. And if we're highly defensive, it's going to be impossible for me to live in a house of truth when I'm always on the defense. Many people lie out of survival. That's the reason that when we look in the Old Testament, we, we look at Abraham. Abraham lied out of survival. Many of you lie to your spouses out of survival. You think that if you tell the truth, it may be over, but actually the very thing that you are hiding from is the thing that's going to create intimacy in your relationship that you've been lacking, but you are scared to go to the areas of truth. And so your prayer needs to be, God, let me not be so defensive. Yes, you've been hurt. Yes, you've been lied to, but maybe it's because you can't receive the truth well. And that's a prayer that you need to start praying. God, help me to be able to receive the reality of things around me. I know that everything will not be perfect, but if everything around me can be honest, then I'll be able to be strengthened and grow up and be mature as opposed to acting like an infant every time something happens to me. If every time truth comes to your home and you're an infant and you're crying and you're slamming things and you're throwing stuff and you're doing things, then you have not created a mature spiritual growth. And the prayer is... God, help me to be strengthened in a loving, non-threatening environment so that truth can live in a home built on a solid foundation. Ephesians extends this to all Christians. It says, live a life worthy of the calling you have received. He says he describes his life as one in which we are humble, gentle, patient, bearing with one another in love, and making efforts toward unity. If we're not doing that in our response, if we're not doing that in our delivery, then we are not doing it the way that God has called us to do it. And if it's not working, it's because you're not practicing it the right way. And the third thing is when we speak truth to build up, we can ask ourselves that question before we respond. Will this build them up or will this tear them down? Did you know that a lack of truth is affecting the intimacy in your relationship? That partners that share less of the truth will experience less intimacy, less empathy, and less compassion.
The less you talk, the less you will desire other relationships. The less you share, the more you will desire other experiences. The less you share, the more you experience, oh, how do I get out of this? The less that you share, the more that you keep inside of you because you think you're protecting the relationship. All you're doing is creating bigger termites that are eating away on the inside. And at some point, things are going to start to break. And when they break, when it's that long, it's going to be harder to repair. So just like our lives, there's a cure for termites. And it's called sodium borate, which is also borax. Borax is something like Clorox. It cleans clothes. It cleans things. It's, a, it's, it's, it's almost like a bleach that it'll clean things up. And if you put borax out, it will bring the termites out and it will kill the termites. It, it kills termites, but it also cleans clothes. It's like the truth. The truth will always kill a lie and it will clean up a relationship. Borax will, will lure the termites away from the wood. The truth will lure the lies out of your relationship. And depending on the damage on how soon you get rid of the termites will, determine, will determine the amount of repair. And so today I'm praying that every relationship says, screw it. We need to stop the bleeding in our relationship. I need to pull out the borax today. I need to just tell you how I'm feeling. And it's not to, to exonerate myself, but it's to build up. I need to uncover these things so that we can live in our truth. I need to be able to express myself so our intimacy can stop having walls. Why do we get to a point and we can't get over that? Because lies are sucking out the passion in your relationships. Stop the termites at work today. Stop the eating of the wood. And the only way to stop the manifestation and the growing degradation of your relationship is to tell the truth and wrap it in love. Some of y'all are struggling. You're like, no, nah, Pastor, I can't tell. I can't tell this. I can't, I can't reveal this. I'm telling you, you are dying right now on the inside. Your addiction exists because you are unable to be truthful with the people that are around you. Whether it's pornography or whether it's gambling or whether it's drinking or whether it's a drug addiction or whether it's a, an addiction to shopping or whether it's small trinkets or whether it's buying big things or big ticket items or living a whole separate lifestyle, you are dying in that because you are unable to reveal and use the borax. God has always said, I will create a way of escape for you, and it's always called the truth. Because what if God knew us and loved us before we loved ourselves and always gave us everything that we needed in order for us to be successful in any situation? When we lie, what we're doing is we're taking God out of the equation and we're putting ourselves in a self-substantial place that is not good for us. Yeah, you're struggling because you don't feel like you're living out your purpose. You don't know where you are in life. You, you expect it to be greater. Then just say that and stop saying nothing. If you don't feel like you, you love yourself, then just say, I'm struggling with self-love right now in this season. But you don't have to stay there. You just need to be honest. And really, we're not honest with other people because we're not honest with ourselves and what we want and what we need. And instead of being honest with ourselves, we'll lie to you all day. But you can't lie to God. So I believe that as we pull the bull rocks out, as we start to tell the truth in love, I see relationships where honesty is champion. I, I see relationships when honesty comes out, you go out to dinner and you celebrate for the truth. I see a, a moment when, when, the, when the honesty comes out, they're not hitting you, but they're loving you and they're hugging you and they're embracing you. And you live in a place now where you can't wait to get this off of your chest because I am experiencing an intensified love with my spouse and with my partner and the person that I'm with. And I believe that if I tell them the truth, they will support me. They will build me up. They will protect me. They will be able to extend grace and love unto me. They will be able to give me something that I can't give myself I'm already condemned I don't need condemnation I need love And I see your relationships changing right now. I see it on your heart. It's, it's weighing on you right now. You're saying, I want to release this right now. You're saying, well, my spouse, they're not even listening to this message, so they're going to hit me upside the head. But guess what? It's your job to be truthful. I see couples living in their truth. I see marriages repairing their foundation regardless 
of the truth. I see grace being poured out from heaven. I see mending happening. I see new houses being built. I see old houses being torn down and a new foundation being poured on truth. Because the Bible says that a house is not built on truth. If it's not built on the word of God, if it's not built on the power of God, then it will blow away in all circumstances like job loss or like weight gain or like sickness and, and disease. When those things happen, if it's not built on truth, it will all pass away. But only what we build for Christ will last. And the reason it will last is because it's built on a foundation, a real foundation, not one that's filled with mirrors and smoke. He's trying to give you something here. I'm trying to set some folks free today. That you can be honest with your children and where they are. That you can coach them and be able to encourage them and build them up without telling them that they're amazing and that they're perfect just the way that they are. The Bible says that we are imperfect, so how can we be perfect? We may be good at something. Yes, tell us that we're good. Build us up, but don't lie to us. So my prayer is today that we can look in the mirror Say, Carlos, Tisha, Fatima, Jordan, Joshua, Stephanie, Michael, Martha, Tamara. This is who I have become, but this is not who I am. This is what I've done, but this is not who I am. This is what I've engaged in, but this is not who I am. This is my past, but this is not who I am because the Bible says there is no condemnation in Christ Jesus. And if the Bible says I am who he says I am, he has never called you a condemned crook and a sinner. That may be what you've done, but that's not who you are. You are a child of the Most High God. You are a king. You are the head. You are the anointed. You are the powerful one. When you open up your mouth, miracles start happening. When miracles start happening, walls start to fall. When you be who you are and when you live in your truth, when you express yourself and what's happening, God is going to build a house that's going to be to stay able to stand in cold weather, in warm weather, in uh, uh, hurricane weather when things are falling apart in fires you will be built on a solid stone and so I'm praying right now that the relationships that are connected to Inspiration Church that they start to be houses that people can live in really that we can be in a real place have a real conversation have a real thought and really grow so I know what you're saying. It's, it's, it's tough for me to be honest right now, Pastor. I'm too deep in. I've accumulated $600,000 in debt. I can't tell my wife that. I've cheated on her three or four times. I've cheated on my husband. I've done these things. I can't tell them that. I've been having thoughts about other people. I've lusted in my mind. I've cheated on my taxes. I've done some things. I took out a payday loan. I didn't tell her, him. I've been talking to somebody, been texting somebody, and I probably shouldn't have. I'm going to just cut it off. I won't be honest about it. I've been thinking about things that are not good. I'd rather keep that to myself because if I bring it out, it won't be good. That's the trick of the enemy. I've got something that I'm struggling with. I can't tell my spouse. I'll try to keep it to myself. I don't really want to. I'll wait. I won't do it today. I'll wait. I'll wait till the, till the time is right. The timing is, the timing will never be right. But it will always be right if you leave with the truth. It will always be right when you leave with the truth. And not the truth in a berating, belittling way, but in the truth wrapped inside of love. Somebody say that truth wrapped in love. Honesty. Honesty will set you free. Honesty will make you free. Free indeed to be able to experience the real love of God in this season of our lives. So if I can be honest with you, I've lied. 
And a lie is the intent to deceive. Not a mess up, but an intent. I intended to deceive you. And that's how you can tell the difference between an imperfect moment and a lie. I intended to deceive you. But guess what? We're creating a new culture. We're creating a new house. We're building a new place. We're building new relationships. We're building new families. We're building a new community. We're building it and we're building it on the truth where people are rewarded for telling the truth. So I want you to make this declaration with me. I will reward those around me for telling the truth. I will will reward those people around me that tell me the truth. I will be a place where truth can live. I'll be honest and I'll let people be honest with me. So my prayer for you is that God builds you up on the inside and he gives you the ability to be able to receive honesty and you can celebrate in those moments. But the first thing that you have to do is you have to be able to receive God's love and knowing that you can be honest with God. That if I can be honest that I'm a sinner, God, that I've fallen short and I, 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 I've done some things that are wrong, that's you being honest with God. And he says that, oh, since you've been honest, with me, I will give you forgiveness. The Bible says confess your sins, and he's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and purify you from all unrighteousness. It works with him, and it also works with people. But you have to start here first on the vertical. And the only way that your relationship can see a moment of empowerment is to be able to say, God, I've fallen short, and I need you to be my Savior. He says when you say that, I'll come into your, your life. All you have to do is confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe that God raised Jesus from the dead. He says, I'll save you from all of your lies. And once you do that, God is going to open up space and make space for honesty and truth to live around you so that you can grow in unity. And so if that's you right now, you say, you know what, I'm tired of living a lie, type in truth, and we want to connect with you. And maybe you're here today and you're like, man, I've been living in a lie, but I want, I want things to change. Just, just slip your hand up. You don't have to raise it real high. Just, just put it in front. And say, I, I, I want to be honest. I want to be honest. I want to I wanna have the courage to be able to be honest and truthful so that my relationship can grow and grow in a way that's pleasing unto God. So God, we all ask for forgiveness because we've all lied and we've all fallen short of the glory of God. But I pray today, Father, that the termites will be laid out by the truth. And you can start to repair the foundations of our homes so that we can grow in the power of God. Father, we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, glory to God. Glory to God. Come on, were you blessed by today's message? Have I got a witness? Were you blessed by today's message? Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Well, I do have two more very important appeals for you. My first appeal for you today is for rededication. Maybe you've been, maybe you've fallen by the wayside a little bit. Maybe you've been even lying to yourself and saying, you know what? It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Well, right now is a great time for you to make the decision to rededicate your life. It's as simple as praying the prayer of rededication. If that's you and you're here with us virtually, just go ahead and type in a uh, connect and we'll connect with you. And if that's you here, you can raise your hand. Do we have anyone all across the room? Glory to God. And here's my second and final appeal for church membership. Maybe you've been coming to Inspiration Church. You've been lying to yourself saying, I am a member there. And you haven't joined. Right now is a great chance for you to join Inspiration Church. And then for those of you who are with us virtually, it's amazing for you to be with us virtually. But to be a member and to be connected is very vital and important. And so if that's you, type in connect. And if that's you here, raise your hand. Well, glory to God. We're all family. Glory to God. Glory to God. Well, here is the vital time in our worship service where we're able to worship God with our giving. Come on. How many cheerful people do I have this morning who will worship God with their giving? Well, glory to God. If you're here with us physically, you can raise your hand if you want to pay by method of cash. And then the three ways that you can give by. The first way that you can give by is our website, which is www.yourinspirationnow.com backslash donate and you can click the donate tab there excuse me not backslash donate click the donate tab there and you'll be able to move from there and the second way that you can give is by our app which is fellowship one go 
And then the third way that you can give is by Cash App, and you can type in dollar sign Inspiration Church. And whichever way you choose to give, we mix our faith with yours, and we believe that God will open up the windows of heaven upon your life. And if you're here with us physically, as you give your gift, we have a gift for you. Uh, can all the women raise their hands for me today? All the women. Okay, good deal. Well, right now we have roses that are being passed out to you to show you how much we love you and appreciate you on this Valentine's Day. Fellas, can we clap it up for our ladies, for our amazing women? And so as you receive these roses, know that we love you, we love you, and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. And if you're with us virtually and uh, you're one of the women that I'm speaking about, listen, you should have been here. You should have been here. You could have got your rose. But no, we love you just the same. And so we want to thank you all for all that you do. Well, glory to God. Glory to God. Also, we do have a presentation. We do have a video about the land at this moment. Now 17 acres, yes, and we are walking, it's a little trail, and so we're, we're praying over the land we're walking through. Hey, this is what we have to do, this is what I need you to do. I know you're looking at how are we going to be able to do this, uh, that's a lot of land, I know all of these thoughts are coming through your mind. So one, I need you to pray, I need you to pray like you've never prayed before, that resources and finances come from everywhere, that people can connect with the vision of Inspiration Church to be able to do what God has called us to do. Two, I need you to get a job. Now I don't need you to get a job, I need you to start a business so that you can have some funding to be able to contribute uh, to this particular land. It's going to be more than a church, it's going to be a community community development. It is going to change the way that this area looks. It is going to change the project trajectory of what we're doing in this city. We're located right off of a main road and Highway 6, so this is a perfect space. How much is it going to be? I know you were asking. $1.2 million is what we need to raise. It's different from a mortgage. It's different from putting a building on it. Since it's just land, it's going to be a different deal. So we need to raise as much money as possible. We need you. I can't do it on my own. We can't do it on our own. But I believe with your support, we can do all things. Because God says that we can do all things through Christ who is inside of us. Look down here. It goes for miles. And we're excited about it because we are Inspiration Church. So guess what? I'm going to love you. We're going to live with it. And guess what? I'm going to and so I believe that God will do that here at Inspiration Church, and I declare that today. Let us pray over our tithes and offerings. Well, Father, we do thank you and praise you, Lord God, that you have given us the command and you have told us to build and arise. Father, we thank you that a tenth of the monies that we have been blessed with, we give back to you because it was you who gave it to us, Father, for you are our source. Father, today I come praying for anyone who is without. I come praying for anyone who doesn't know where their next meal is, anyone who is out of work and unemployed. Father, for the one who wants to give, but just really doesn't have. Father, you know their heart, and I pray that you would bless them indeed. Father, I come praying for the one who is cheerful in giving, for the one that you love so much for making that mindset and making the decision to give, build, and arise. Father, we do thank you and we praise you. It's in Jesus' name. Let the church say amen, amen. Well, glory to God. Well, I do hope that you have signed up for iGroups. February is the month that iGroups is starting. So please, please, if you have not signed up for iGroups, please make sure that you make your way to the iGroup table, which is here, and sign up for iGroups. That is your way to be connected throughout the week also boot camp boot camp is february the 20th at tom bass park february the 20th at tom bass park at 10 a.m we love to see all of you there we do want to make sure that we participate every time that we do an event uh first lady and pastor carlos have the mindset of, of attendance so we do want to make sure that we participate so if that's you and you want to participate meet me at the connect center to sign up Meet me at the Connect Center to sign up. Growth Track, if this is, um, I believe, Miss Reese, Growth Track to, is today. So we will be starting our Growth Track today. So immediately following service, please make sure that you head to Growth Track. Also, prison ministry. How many people know anyone who's in prison or anyone who's been in prison? Glory to God. This is what I love for you to do. For those of you who know anyone who's been in, who is in prison currently, 
please send the church their name and information. We have a prison ministry that is amazing and we are able to contact and dwell and, and live with them while they're inside of the walls. So if you have anyone who is incarcerated, please contact us, let us know so that we can be a resource to them. And then if you, if you have ever been in prison or know someone who's been in prison, then you know how it is when you want to receive a letter. You know how it is when you want to communicate with other people, right? So we have a young man that we're dealing with. His name is Michael Beers. I'll say it again. His name is Michael Beers. We will be writing him letters. Please make sure that you write a letter. I know some of you may say, I don't know him personally. That's okay. Show love. We also have a member of our church, which is Clint and Kent's brother, Mr. Jacoby. Uh, Mr. Jacoby, correct? Mr. Jacoby, please make sure that we write those two people and we will have that information for you. If you say, I don't have the address, just write the letter, get it to us, and we'll get it to them. It's vital that we communicate with those who are behind walls. Jesus says, when I was in prison, you did not come to me. And we don't want to be the, that group of people, right? So let's make sure that we do that. Uh, the store, everything is still 50% off. Please make sure that you go to the store and get some uh, really nice threads. Um, make sure that you support what we have going on here by getting your uh, uh, shirts and things of that nature your apparel as you see miss Bree, she's opening it up right now and right now at this moment is our bhm our black history moment john henry jones father of carlos and john jones played baseball in the old negro league long before african americans were allowed to play in the farm system John Henry Jones had an opportunity to play for the Los Angeles Dodgers and the Pittsburgh Pirates. Thank you, John Henry Jones, for your role in Black history. that to admin at your inspirationnow.com. Well, glory to God. Were you blessed by today's worship service? Everyone stand on your feet. Glory to God. I dare someone just to praise God right now. Come on, celebrate God for all that he is doing in this season. Come on, I dare you to shout hallelujah. I dare you to shout that God is faithful. Come on, bless God right now in this moment before we leave. Father, we do thank you and praise you for all that you are doing getting ready to do and have done at Inspiration Church. Father, for each and every person that is leaving this place who is under the sound of my voice, whether virtually or physically, Father, I speak the blessings upon their life. They are the head and not the tail. They will live and not die. They are above and not under. They will speak truth and not lies. So, Father, we do thank you and we praise you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. I love you. Go in the blessings of the Lord. And as you go throughout your week, always remember to love, live, live.